Hey everyone, I'm Scott Cunningham, aka Scottsy Business, and today we're going to be going over my investing report for the month of January, where we look at all of the dividend investing I do, growth stocks, growth crypto, uh, diving into more speculative crypto, privacy related crypto, and digital cash holdings. I'm going to be diving into all of that and what I'm doing to passively earn income in this update after a quick word from my sponsor. A big thank you and shout out to my sponsor Cake Wallet, which is an open source, non-custodial Bitcoin and Monero wallet that also has a built-in exchange. It's available on iOS and Android. Okay, thanks again to my sponsor. Let's jump into it. So um, last month I earned about $101 from dividends. Um, not the most, but still definitely up there. A lot of this is all going to change going forward because I've drastically changed everything with my entire stock portfolio. So I'm not going to get into all that until we actually go and look at it. For now, we'll just talk about the basics and the overview of what I normally do. And then I'll dive into actually all the individual stuff that has happened because a lot has happened over the past few weeks, uh, which has made me dramatically re imagine my entire portfolio, how I'm going to retire a lot of different things. So I'm going to be diving into all of that in this episode. You can see that my total dividends earned uh, is now over $1,730. I liquidated my entire portfolio. Again, we'll, we'll get into all of that. Uh, and then I'll just be tracking how everything performs after that because it's going to be dramatically different. Um, and it's just going to be a lot easier to track it this way. I'll still have the total dividends earned at the top uh, to track that as well. In terms of crypto income, I earn $78.13, which you can see is uh, increasingly going up much, much more uh, every month. So as I'm sort of pulling out of dividends, I'm really uh, putting a lot of emphasis and focus on crypto income and just continuing to compound interest and uh, and keep building those accounts up. So crypto income is really going to be the focus going forward and diving in more into privacy related cryptocurrencies. And I'll be doing a whole breakdown of all of them in existence and what I'm looking into and everything. For now, I'm just looking at Monero. As I get more acquainted with it and do more research, I will, uh, I will come back to that as well. Uh, in terms of other passive income, I got uh, $2.82 from royalties. Nothing really uh, that big of a deal, but uh, you know, still worth noting. Uh, crypto has continued to perform poorly. Uh, my account at the beginning of February was at 196,000. It's now at, I believe, 178,000. So it's still going down. And unless something dramatic happens today, uh, I will start the next month about close to 20,000 down from the previous month. I think we're nearing the end of this dip. And we're going to start seeing things turn around. There's so much going on in the world that it's really hard to get an idea of where things are going. But I think originally we saw a lot of people pulling out of crypto just to have money to be able to buy supplies, emergency supplies and everything that they need to do. And then now we're seeing people investing in it, realizing that um, there's so much going on, like with what happened here in Canada, people taking uh, the government being able to just take your finances if it's related to fiat or the bank or on an exchange. People are realizing that some of the only ways that you can actually fully protect your wealth is through something like cryptocurrency because it can't be taken away, whereas every other asset class uh, can be interfered with by the government and they can take it away from you. So people are starting to jump back into crypto, um, seeing all this commotion. You see people in Russia all withdrawing their money from the banks. We already know that the banks only legally have to keep a very small portion of their total wealth on hand. And if we're going to see more of that in other countries, it's going to become uh, much more of a severe situation with centralized banking and, and how that all plays out. But uh, I, I know for a fact that people in Canada are definitely waking up to this and, um, you know, with the government 
going after these people. A lot of people are pulling out of banks and looking for new ways to uh, transact wealth. And it's concerning here in Canada because we are such a um, cashless society that it's very easy to accomplish for the government. So, you know, people are starting to wake up and look at alternative methods for holding, storing, securing, and um, growing their wealth going into the future. In terms of my stock investment portfolio, it has always been going up and performing fairly well. Um, I completely liquidated it, so this isn't really accurate. I will update this in uh, the next one um, going forward for the beginning of March. I will uh, mark where it is. I believe it's at 11,000 right now because I just liquidated everything, moved everything over to Quest Trade, and uh, just I'm just doing a few ETFs now. Very, very basic. I will get into that though. Uh, and then lastly, my total portfolio is at about $266,775 uh, when I last noted at the beginning of the month for, um, or sorry, at the end of January. So I will note the total value at the end uh, of the day today for this and, uh, and that will track that as well. My total portfolio now, like right now, is very close to that. Um, it's actually up a little bit, which is nice. You can see it's actually $272,896. So it has gone up since then, which is great to see. And I mean, you know, part of that is just me earning money and continually adding to my stuff. But um, I've been really switching things up and focusing more on privacy crypto, precious metals, actually withdrawing cash. I've got the most physical cash that I've ever had and digital cash. Um, never did I previously think I would be wanting to hold on to fiat, but you know, we're in very unprecedented times, essentially, because I mean, we've got war on one hand, we on one hand, we've got uh, government overreach on the other so much is going on and it's it's very surreal considering i only recently posted a video about financial backups and what you can do to back up your finances and i alluded to the fact that people's bank accounts being shut down or you know frozen or whatever is uncommon but it's more common than you might think and only a few days after making that video uh, we actually saw everything that happened over the past little while play out. So it's pretty surreal that I made that video. And then not soon after, uh, we had people's bank accounts being frozen and shut down all across Canada. So, you know, it really just points to how severe this actually is and, and how impactful um, just being on top of these kinds of things and having backups, having crypto, having different solutions ready for your finances shows how important that really is so yeah you can see the total there um when we look at my individual stocks you can see i essentially exited everything and uh, i kept my little investment fund on tangerine and then i just took about eleven thousand, put that into quest trade and i'm just investing in four basic dividend etfs in canada I'm keeping it very simple now. I'm not going to be wasting time looking at different stocks and putting all this time and effort and energy into research only to have my stock account closed, you know, like like that, like super easily, little to no effort. Everything that you put in gets wiped away. There's no reason that you should be putting in this much time and effort when you could just, you know, invest in ETFs. Um, and all of that could just be taken away, right? So the only reason that I exited all my stocks and I'm doing this is A, I don't want to give any more money to the banks. Like I was previously investing in banks. I was treating investing very amorally. And now I'm thinking, I mean, obviously these ETFs are going to invest in banks as well, but I don't want to directly give money to banks anymore if I don't have to. I don't want to store any more money in a bank than I need to. I don't want to invest through a bank. I don't want to uh, do any of that stuff. I don't want to invest in banks either. So I've pulled out of all of that. And, you know, while investing on Quest Trade is just as likely, and like they will comply just as easily as a bank would, it is cheaper fee wise. And, 
just having less money in the banks, I feel a little bit more confident in it regardless. I'm still, um, I still essentially liquidated 75% of my portfolio because I'm just not comfortable having this much wealth in the banks or in an investment account anymore, sadly, because we have TFSAs here in Canada. So we have a lot of incentive to actually use those, but uh, clearly at the same time, uh, they have significantly more power to uh, do whatever they want with our finances as well. So it's a double edged sword and I'm always going to err on the side of security ownership, um, decentralization over, you know, tax advantages um, and potentially making more money. Previously, I probably would have leaned towards uh, making more money. And now I've got a much bigger focus on privacy and security and ownership and decentralization. Um, again, just with everything that has happened, I've always been a big proponent of, of this, but now I'm becoming fairly extreme in what I'm willing to tolerate risk wise. And it's going to cut into my profits and into my passive income a little bit, but I'm going to find ways to make up for this with crypto income and just shifting things around. Right now, the main focus is getting better set up, um, buying gold, precious metals, uh, preparing myself for emergency situations, which I hadn't really previously covered in my financial preparations. So that's my main focus right now. Once I've got all of that settled, I'm going to just be looking into privacy coins, focusing a lot more on that and uh, having a much larger focus on building up my passive crypto income. Again, uh, I don't take any of this lightly. This completely scraps my entire retirement plan, which was to get a million dollars, retire, and then live off about 5% dividends. Uh, now, generally the same plan, but with crypto um, and maybe real estate, I'm not totally sure. Um, a lot of this stuff that isn't crypto related is just so risky and we've seen how easy it is for it to be taken away. And I don't want to play that game. So I'm, I'm going to be focused mainly on crypto, even though it's riskier in terms of price and volatility. I will take that trade for security, ownership and decentralization. Everything else is uh, fairly normal, um, you know, gone down a tiny bit in price. I've been getting a little bit more BUSD just to be able to pay people. Um, with a stable cryptocurrency because I've been doing a lot more freelance hiring and you know paying for research and different things. Um, all just business related things, but I'm just going to be paying that with BUSD for the most part because it's just easy to transact. Growth crypto, um, you know, this is still chugging along haven't really changed anything. I don't plan to change anything here. I'm just going to hold on to this and see how it plays out essentially. Privacy crypto, I'm continuing to stack up my uh, Monero. Might not be the best idea to be always showing you guys how much. Maybe at some point eventually I will stop showing you guys my privacy related stuff, but it's low enough that I'm not super concerned to be sharing it with you. And it's good to just I'm always transparent and I'm always sharing everything with you guys until eventually at some point when I have millions and millions of dollars, I might not be sharing everything and I might start over and do a new account, like a fresh start. Um, and then you could follow along with the same journey all over again. But um, yeah, so we'll, we'll get to that point when we get to it. In terms of staking crypto, I've been powering down my blurt and essentially just selling it all out and trading it into HBD and stacking that up because I just feel a lot more confident, confident in my HBD. And uh, if that ever does change, I can always just put that back into Hive and power that up and delegate it through dealies. The reality is, even though you might be able to do better on Blurt, um, you're so limited into how you can actually liquidate. And if there was ever an issue with that, then my money would all be locked up there. Uh, there's many more ways to interact with Hive and there's so much more development and options and ways to liquidate. I'm always going to opt in for security, ease of liquidation, stuff like that over profits, as I said earlier. So I'm more focused on Hive than I am on Blurt and I'm kind of just powering down and slowly shifting things over. I'm not going to completely power down. Um, I just don't want to have, 
you know, hundreds and hundreds of dollars in here when I could have that just on Hive and feel a lot more secure in, in that as well. And because I can get it out a lot faster, it's also much faster to liquidate, which is, could be very, very important. The only other things that have happened here is I've added a little bit to my Tron and uh, just continued to add a little bit to my HBD. So aside from that, um, those are the main changes and you know, there's a little bit of price action. In terms of actual earnings on here, um, I earned about, well, it was like, it was more than this. I believe it was like 80 something. Um, but since updating the values to what they are now, it's a little bit less, but regardless, still the highest amount that I have received, um, a lot of that coming from, you know, Tron, um, a little bit, a good, a good portion coming from Blurt, but mainly I would say Tron and Hive. Um, and now Adam is becoming a large portion of that as well. Going forward, I think HBD, Adam and Tron are just going to make up the majority of my earnings. Um, I'm not going to be earning anything in, in you know, going forward with Blurt because I was powering down. MTR is uh, always pretty dismal, sadly. I decided I'm not going to be going forward with Ledger because that's just too much of a pain. I'm just going to be focused on Tron Link and earning there. And that's been fantastic and growing steadily. Same with HBD. It's continuing to increase. Same with Hive. So that's all fantastic to see. Uh, I think Adam is going to become a leading earner in my passive income, if not already, very soon. And uh, I'm going to be continually focusing on this and building this up. Uh, my main two are kind of Hive and Adam, and then I would say Tron is the third, but these are all fantastic ways to earn passive income. These are some of my favorite ways. I know a lot of people like to get really into the weeds of liquidity providing, farming, all that stuff, uh, lending. I don't like to get that deep into it. I prefer to just stick with like staking and doing the basics. I don't like getting into lending or providing liquidity and all this different stuff and having to shift things around all the time. I want something that's very consistent and reliable and I could just park money there and then not have to worry about it. So that's everything for crypto income. Um, for speculative income, or not income, just speculative investments in crypto, Luna is sort of a... It was kind of just like a lucky one. Like I'm just earning this through loop and I'm just holding on to it and seeing what happens. So this has gone up, but I'm not actually adding to it. Rune has been by far the most uh, of my speculative investments. And while it hasn't been performing amazing, I see the most future potential for Rune just because of what it offers through Thor swap in the Thor chain. Matic has... Um, it's been okay. Same with BNB. I'm still very confident in what these offer and what they provide that these will all be going up as well. Again, Luna, I'm not so confident in. The reality is it's probably going to do well because people really like UST and what Anchor offers and all that stuff. I think the fees are already getting pretty high considering its usage and how new it is. But, you know, if people are going to be investing in it, I'm fine to hold it and just build that up through my looper airdrops. That's that doesn't cost me anything. It's free, so I don't really mind. That is everything, though. The main point of this video and this update was to sort of give my rationale as to why I essentially liquidated my entire stock portfolio. And then I jumped back in uh, on Quest Trade with about 25% of what I had had when I sold. I was about 26.5% up from what I had originally deposited. So, you know, I was at a massive gain. There was no harm in me liquidating. And I essentially went, I deposited a total of around 30,000 and I ended up with about 39,000. And then I took 11,000 of that, put it back into Quest Trade, kept the rest to withdraw out into cash. Um, to buy precious metals with, all that kind of stuff. I'm dramatically changing everything up as a reaction to what has happened here in Canada. Um, I don't know exactly 100% what my new plan is going to be. Like I mentioned, it's most likely going to be focused on crypto income and crypto uh, staking and earning through that. But uh, I haven't 100% firmed up exactly what I'm going to do. But Everything that I had previously been focused on doing and working towards 
is 100% scrapped. That's never going to happen now. I'm not going to be focused on a stock related retirement plan. It's going to be all crypto focused. So, you know, it's interesting how these things play out. Maybe this was always in the cards to happen that it was going to end up being a crypto retirement and not a stock retirement. Um, I don't know why I thought that stocks would be a good solution. I'd always looked at it like, yes, they're centralized, but they're so regulated and restricted that we should never have any issues like this. But we're seeing now that basically anything that is centralized has the opportunity to be abused and, um, and, and it can be abused and, and it, and it has been, and it probably will be again in the future. That's the sad reality. And if you ever have anything that allows by design for corruption, it probably will happen. Uh, that seems to be the case most of the time, especially when it comes to, um, I mean, anything centralized, especially in finance. But the reality is that the only thing you can do to protect yourself is to utilize decentralized technologies, protect your finances through using and investing in decentralized finance. That's the best thing that you can possibly do to secure your wealth. And then obviously protecting your seed and doing as much that you possibly can to protect and secure what you are responsible for securing. That's everything from me though. Um, you know, we're in pretty crazy times. I never expected to be selling all of my stocks and buying gold and buying like an emergency, uh, you know, survival gear and, and kid and all this kind of stuff. Maybe in a future episode, I'll dive into everything that I've acquired for an emergency, whether it be um, iodine tablets for a nuclear disaster or, you know, having a bug out bag and, um, and, you know, like rations, MREs for if you needed to evacuate the area or as simple as a power outage that could last maybe a week or multiple weeks and being able to actually prepare for those situations because your finances don't really matter if um, if finances in entirely are gone out the window. If we are in a, uh, we, if we have no electricity, if power is down, if internet is down, it'll be nearly apocalyptic. So, you know, do keep stuff like that in mind, not, not to say that this is being alarmist or to scare anyone, but the reality is that once you prepare for something, you're that much more confident in everything else you do, whether it's finance or just, you know, your day to day life, uh, you're more confident in your investing and whatever you're doing with your finances when you know that every other avenue is prepared for and um, and, you, and you're ready for those situations then you have all the confidence in putting your money into investing or whatever else it happens to be. So let me know what you guys are doing. Are you preparing for uh, what might be to come? Are you doing any emergency preparedness? Has this woken you up to what's going on with the banks? Have you been changing your investing strategy or you know, how you just um, sort of spread out your wealth? I've put a lot more emphasis on fiat cash and um and just getting out of stocks i'm only about three percent stocks i believe now um so massively down and 18 percent on cash which is the most i've ever had so again let me know what you guys are doing and um and what you think is you know is coming in the months ahead are you bullish on crypto or are you bearish where do you think things are going let me know in the comments below and uh, thank you so much for watching to the very end. Do comment hashtag number one ham in the comments below. And that way I know you watch the full video. Anyways, I'm Scott Cunningham, aka Scottsy Business, signing off. Cheers.